In this presentation, we will take a journey through different steps in the process of selecting the right wetting and dispersing additive for solvent bond paint system. All formulating chemists come across a lot of choices when it comes to selecting the best dispersant for their system. In the next few sections, we will discuss a few basic tests of this process, like how to test compatibility of the additive with specific resins and pigments, viscosity of mill bases, etc. to determine the best dispersion for the system. We will also review some common industry methods to run these tests in your lab and will end each of these sections with real-time test results from our experimental work with these additives. The most important test for the best additive is to check its compatibility with the specific system. And even though it is the best test, it is often not done. If the dispersant is not compatible with the resin or the solvent combination, it can lead to many issues which are harder to eliminate later. These could be like haziness, turbidity, foam stabilization, cineresis, etc. In order to do a compatibility check of the additive, mix 90 parts of the resin plus about 10 parts of additive and shake or mix well. Check for signs of incompatibility. In this video, we will see how to test compatibility of an additive with a specific system. We are going to take a resin sample and add about 10% of a compatible and an incompatible additive to each bottle separately. Stir or mix them well. As we can see, when the additive is compatible, it maintains its clarity in the system. When it is incompatible, we can see the turbidity. It is important to ensure that the wetting and dispersing additive is compatible and is not developing any haze, turbidity or stabilizing foam in the system. To study compatibility of dispersants in various resin systems, in our lab work, we chose two different solvent bond systems. First was a 2K polyurethane and a second one based on alkyd melamine chemistry. As demonstrated in the video, we then added the previously shortlisted wetting and dispersing additives to each of the resin system, shook it well, and left it to stand for a few minutes. The results are shown in the two pictures here. We found that Dysperbic 2200 and Dysperbic 2205 were not compatible in this specific 2K polyurethane system and developed haze, whereas the same additives in the alkyd melamine system are found to be compatible and therefore can be used successfully. The next important test to select the right dispersant is a viscosity check of the mill base or the paint. An efficient wetting additive is designed to cover all the pigment particles uniformly and prevent any re-agglomeration and therefore with this correct additive the mill base or the paint viscosity is the lowest. The best way to determine mill base viscosity is to use a cone and plate viscometer. A quick check in the lab can also be done by placing about 5 grams of each of the mill base samples separately in a straight line on a white panel. Then slowly tilt the panel to approximately 45 degrees and observe the flow. The paint with the lowest viscosity in the mill base will be having the longest run in the panel. The video demonstrates how to compare viscosity of three different samples using a white flat panel. The first paint on the left is the blank control where there is no dispersing additive and as we can see it has a lot of foam and trap and on tilting the panel starts to lose its flow quickly. The next one in the middle is the same paint but now with wetting and dispersing additive. It shows no foam entrapment and has the lowest viscosity and therefore runs the longest on the panel. Choosing the right wetting and dispersing additive can give two benefits. First, it can drop the original viscosity and help with your VOC numbers or even an improved application. Secondly, if we need to increase the body of the paint, we can now increase the pigment volume or the filler content and get back to the original viscosity. This benefit is shown by the third panel on the right. 
When we did viscosity check to evaluate three different wetting and dispersing additives using two different pigments, Hastaperm Red Violet and a Carbon Black FW200, in our lab, we found a similar observation. As we can see in the two separate graphs, the blank control has a very high initial viscosity, which is not even stable over the hot box storage time. The sample containing Dysperbic 2013, in both the cases, not only has low initial viscosity, but this viscosity is also stable over the hot box storage time. This tells us that the viscosity check can help us choose the right wetting and dispersing additive for a specific resin or a pigment system. Sometimes more than one dispersion can be compatible and seems to be working well in a system. Then the next question should be, is it stable over time? The best dispersion for the formulation will be stable and will have no color changes or any other defects even after running a hot box storage stability for two weeks at 120F. This kind of stability can be determined either by rub out or pour out test of the pigment dispersions or the paint after the paint has been kept at two weeks at 120F. Rub out or rub up is the way to test the stability of the pigment dispersion when shear is applied. And by shear, we mean the forces applied on the paint when either it is being mixed or applied on the substrate. And based on the application, the shear can vary a lot between a brush a roller or a spray gun. When the choice of the dispersant is correct, it wets out the pigment completely and helps to stabilize the system so that no re-agglomeration happens over storage. A stable dispersion should therefore not show any difference in color between its rubbed and non-rubbed section. To check the dispersion stability, Two separate paints were prepared as shown, one without any wetting and dispersing additive and one with a suitable one. Both the paints were then poured out on a mylar sheet and then after 15-20 seconds, as they started to become tacky, the bottom half of each sample was rubbed out with uniform force. The paint without additive was not a stable dispersion and shows a lot of color difference between the rubbed and the non-rubbed area. The paint with the correct wetting and dispersing additive shows no color difference because the dispersion not only wets the pigment well but stabilizes the color. When we did the rub out check with two pigments, Hostoperm Red Violet and Carbon Black, in our project, we found that in both the cases, the best dispersant had least or no color change at all. Here you can see the first pigment, Hostoperm Red Violet results, wherein the pigment concentrate is mixed with a white paint to make a white lid down and the rub out check is performed. In the blank control, Without any additive, there is a huge color difference, which even gets larger over storage time. The samples with Dysperbic 2013 and Dysperbic 163 both perform well in this test. In addition, you can also see the actual rub out cards of the control and the one with Dysperbic 2013 before and after storage. Here again, the black pigment concentrate was mixed with a white colorant to better evaluate the rub out in a white let down result. As seen, the sample containing 2013 shows very little color difference and is found to be stable over time. Pour out is another way to evaluate dispersion stability. If the dispersion is not compatible or stable due to any reason, it can be observed as many other defects in a pour out like seeding, streaking, running, etc. These defects happen because either the pigment did not de-agglomerate well or 
is reflocculating in the paint again. Either way, the dispersion is not stable. In case pour out on a vertical surface is not possible, a drawdown on a clear glass panel or a mylar sheet can also give similar information. In this video, we see two paint samples, one blank control without a proper dispersing additive and the next with wetting and dispersing additive. Both the paint samples are being poured down slowly and uniformly on a vertical mylar sheet. As the paint runs down, we can see that the blank has many runs, streaks and even can start to see small seeds or agglomerates. This happens because the dispersion was never completely achieved and then the paint is not stable. On the right hand side, the sample with the additive is consistent and the color is stable during the pour out too. When we did the same test using a drawdown on a clear glass panel for a hot box storage sample of Hostepom Red Violet, we can see the color difference very clearly. In addition, we can see that the color transparencies are different too. If we took the same glass panel and put it over a dark base, like the big logo shown here, we can see that the paint on the right with the dispersant is deflocculated and stable and has great transparency compared to the one on the left without the additive. A similar drawdown on a glass panel from a hot box storage sample of a carbon black dispersion shows a comparable result. The sample with dispersant, specifically Dispurbic 2013 in the paint, was deflocculated and stable over time and shows no other defects when compared to the sample on the left, which is unstable and shows many defects. The last step to determine the best wetting and dispersing additive is to find the optimum dosage level for the dispersant. Sometimes we may think if it is compatible, more may be better. But once we have done our screening study, it is really important to optimize the loading level. Too much or too little, either way can hurt the performance and stability. We need to run samples and test their loading levels for viscosity, color values, stability to get the optimum performance. We can see when a ladder study is done to determine the right loading level. We can see that different shades of green color show up on different levels. The dispersion looks worse not only at 10% loading level on the weight of the pigment, but also at high 40%. It clearly indicates that more is not better. The optimum level for pigment quantity was about approximately 20% weight of pigment. And just a note, please do remember, all big wetting and dispersing additives are added on the weight of the pigment used and not the total formulation weight. Here we see some of our lab results. If we take two additives at three dosage levels, low, medium, and high, as shown by the points D1, D2, and D3 on the graph, and plot their initial viscosities, we will see that both these dispersants follow a U-shaped curve as the dosage level increases. The best dispersant will have the lowest viscosity at the smallest possible level. In this case, we find that additive 2 at point D2 is the best choice for the system. We repeated this ladder study with Dispurbic 2013 at three different loading levels. As highlighted, we found that for this system containing Hostepom violet pigment, the optimum level was approximately 30% solid on pigment. This level gave the desired storage stability to the dispersion also. Any further increase of dispersant is not required and will not be beneficial. As we conclude this project, we find that Dispurbic 2013 has passed all the tests required for mill bases or pigment dispersions in flying colors. It is compatible with most challenging pigments like organics and carbon blacks. It is indeed the right dispersant. This new dispersant Dispurbic 2013 is a VOC-free, 100% solid material 
based on Vic's new controlled polymer technology. It can be used for high solids, solvent-free, aqueous, and even UV coating systems. As an efficient wetting and dispersing additive, it is very good at low levels and not only creates strong colors, but also helps drop the grind viscosity significantly. Disperbic 2013 is very environmentally friendly product and has no halogens, isocyanate, or any tin in it. This brings us to the end of this presentation. And as you can see, Disperbic 2013 can be used in many different kind of coatings applications. We hope you had fun and learned something new and informative about wetting and dispersing additives and will be able to successfully formulate with Disperbic 2013 in your formulations also. Thank you for your time and interest.